Hello, hello. In this video, we're gonna do the box called Root Me on the TryHackBee platform. So stick around. If this is the first time that we're meeting, welcome to my channel. My name is John Good, and here I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss future content, and make sure to leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. Also, check out my website at johngood.com where you can find career coaching, consulting services, and training. Check out my YouTube membership program by clicking the join button down below and you'll see the different tiers that are available. Also check out my getting started page where you can grab a free copy of my ebook on cybersecurity careers. All right, so to find the box, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to try hack me and then we're gonna go to learn and then all rooms. We're gonna go to free only because it's a free only box. And then we're gonna go CTFs and then we're gonna go to easy. Again, we're gonna do the root me box. So we'll click that. And just like any box on here or any room, you have to join that room first. And we'll go ahead and hit start machine. Now I'm gonna use the attack box within the browser to do this, but you can of course use your Kali instance and connect that way as well. And so we'll go ahead and start this and we'll check back once this is done. All right, now the box is launched, so let's go ahead and get started here. So we'll hit complete on here because we did that. And now it wants us to scan the system. So let's open up the terminal window here. And the IP address that we need is right here. So let's do nmap. We'll do pn because we know the box is up. And we'll do dash a 10107207. Now this dash a that's gonna do a lot of initial enumeration. So things like service checks and looking for the version and the open ports. All right, so that's done. Now the first question is how many ports are open on the box? So we see SSH on port 22, HTTP on port 80, and that's it. So we have two ports. Let's go ahead and put two in here and submit that. And then which version of Apache is running? 2429. Let's put that in here. Submit that. Which service is running on port 22? We have SSH running on port 22. So let's put SSH in here. Now it wants us to run GoBuster against the web browser. So let's go ahead and let's copy the IP address. And we will open up a new tab. And we'll do go buster. We're gonna search directories. The word list that we're gonna use is gonna be user share word list. And this is the one that I always use. So we will use the small version of this one. And then the URL is gonna be that. All right, let's go ahead and hit enter and search this. Okay, so pretty quick results here. So we have uploads and we'll make this here bigger here so you can see it. So we have uploads, we have CSS, JS and panel. Now we'll hit completed on this because we scanned it. What is the hidden directory? So I'm gonna guess that it's panel because these other ones probably are visible. So let's go ahead and put panel in there. And that was correct, awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the actual URL here. So we will open that link. And this is the main page here. So we're gonna go to that panel website. It's an uploadable page. So let's go ahead and let's find out what we can upload into here. Let's make this full screen here. And actually, let's see here. It wants us to find a flag once we do that. All right, so let's minimize that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna upload a shell into here. So there are some preloaded shells that we can use. So if we look at user share web shells, and then PHP, there is this PHP reverse shell. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy that to our desktop.
and we're going to call it shell.php. Right? Now there are some modifications that you have to make to that shell. So first of all, we need to get our IP address. So let's do ifconfig. And our IP address is right here. So we'll go ahead and copy that. And let's do vi shell.php so we can edit this file. All right, and we're using the down arrow to scroll down here. And we need to modify this variable here. So I press I to insert. And we're going to put in our IP address here. I do control shift V that inserts that IP address that we just copied. We'll hit escape and then escape one more time because it's in the browser and it gets kind of weird. And then we'll hit shift colon and then WQ for right quit. That's going to save that IP address to that file. All right, so let's make this big again here. All right, so let's go ahead and upload that shell to the actual victim. So we'll do that shell.php that we just modified and we'll hit upload. So not permitted, not allowed. Well, that's not helpful. So what kind of file types can we actually upload? Well, there's a quick and easy way to do this. Of course, you can change the extensions on the actual file, but if there's a lot of different extensions that you wanna try, I have a better way to do it. I hope that you're enjoying the content in this video so far. If you are, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss future content. And if you have any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. All right, let's get back to the content. Let's go ahead and open up Burp Suite. And we're not gonna update. We're just gonna use the default settings here. So we'll hit next and start Burp. And we'll go back to our web browser here. And actually first, we're gonna go to the proxy tab and intercept is on. So we just wanna make sure that that's turned on. And we're gonna to go to browse. And actually, before we do that too, so Foxy proxy, we need to actually enable Burp Suite to capture our traffic. So we'll select Burp here. And then now we will go ahead and try to upload that again. So we'll browse to it and we'll hit upload. Burp is gonna capture our traffic here. So we'll go back to Burp. And we're gonna go ahead and forward all this on. And we can turn this off now. So we'll turn that back on. And we'll go to the HTTP history. So we're gonna look at this, and this is our shell.php. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on this traffic. We're gonna send it to intruder. We'll go to the intruder tab, and we'll go to positions. Now we're gonna hit clear because that's gonna clear out all the things that can get modified. We're gonna select PHP from our file that we tried to upload and we're gonna hit add. And you wanna make sure this is sniper because it's gonna mess with one variable, one section. And then we'll go to payloads. And in this payloads option, this simple list, we're gonna add some file type extensions. So we're gonna do text, txt, we're gonna do php5, and we'll do back just for the heck of it, All right? And then we're gonna start our attack. And community version saying it's going to throttle certain attacks or certain things. We'll hit okay, it's not gonna affect us. And actually what we need to do as well, we need to actually add PHP in here so you can see the difference. So we'll do PHP, we'll add that, and we'll hit start attack. All right, so you can see with the length here, there's different links. For PHP, we know that got rejected. It's got a different link than the other ones. So these ones, this text, back, and PHP 5, those are successful. So now if we go back to our web browser, we can go to the uploads folder, and we need to turn off our proxy. So if we go back to burp, and intercept, we can turn that intercept off. And we're actually done with burp, so we can go ahead and close out of that as well. And turn off our foxy proxy as well. So we can see PHP 5 was uploaded. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to turn on Netcat. So NC NLVP, 
one, two, three, four, because that was the port that's set in that file where we modified our IP address. So we'll hit return, we'll go back to our web browser, and we will execute this file. And there you go. Now we have a shell for the user level on the box. Great. So we'll go ahead and minimize that, and we'll make this bigger here. Awesome. So now we need to find the user.txt file because that's gonna have the flag in it that we need. So we're gonna do find, we're gonna do type, we're gonna look for files, and we're looking for something with the name user.txt. And we got a whole bunch of other stuff here. So a quick way to get rid of all that stuff is if you do find, type file name, user.txt, and then we direct everything else to null. There we go. So that is the location of our flag that we need for the user. So if we do cat var, and then we do that file, we can see the actual flag. All right, so if we go back here and we put that in here, All right, awesome. And now let's the next section. We need to search for files with the set UID permission. All right, so basically with the set UID permission, that means that you can run files or scripts or whatever as that user that owns it. So it can be very dangerous. So let's go ahead and go back to our window here. And we're gonna type find, type file again. We're gonna look for user root, so something that's owned by the root with the permissions of set UID. And then we're gonna send everything else to devnull. All right, so these are all the files that have the permission set UID on them, okay? So let's look through these real quick here. Now, this one right here is particularly interesting. So let's think about that. And then also too, another possible quick thing that you can do too on some of these boxes is if you do sudo dash L, that will tell you if you can run sudo commands. So if you can run things as root. You can on this box, so it's fine. But that's just another thing to be considerate of. So since we have the Python that we can run as a set UID, that's pretty interesting. All right, so we're gonna bring in another web browser here and we're gonna go to Google and we're gonna search for GTFO bins. All right, and we'll select this first option here. So we're gonna search for Python. All right, and we're looking for this set UID or the SUID. So we see this right here. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna copy this. And we'll go back to our window here. And actually, let's go back in here real quick to the questions here. So the thing that we think is weird is user bin Python. And that's correct. So we definitely need to use that. So we'll go back here and it's not gonna let us paste that command in there, unfortunately. So we'll type it in here, Python. And there we are. We are now root user. Awesome. So we'll hit complete it on here for that. And now we need to find that root flag. Same thing, it's gonna be root.txt. So we're gonna do find. We're gonna look for a file. And it's gonna be called root.txt. Right, so there is the file right there. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cat the contents of that out. So cat, and then there we go. Put that in here. And because I'm using the browser version, it's a little bit weird with the copy paste. Sometimes it doesn't work, which is unfortunate. So it might be a reason to actually use a real instance of Kali. But we'll hit submit on here. And hopefully I typed that right. There we go.
successfully compromised this box. Right, and you can share it to Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever you want. Question of the day. Going through this box, were there some common issues that you had? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we went through the Root Me box on the Try Hack Me platform. As always, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and leave a thumbs up for this video if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.